appeal and the popularity of time travel films lies in the fact that everybody asks themselves, what if? What if I had left work 10 minutes later, then I wouldn't have been at the intersection where I got into a car accident, and I would have been on time for dinner, and I wouldn't have gotten into that fight with my wife or whatever. I think the allure of time travel stories has to do with the illusion of omnipotent control that we all get to use as a defense against helplessness in a world where we can't really control the outcome of our own actions and our own choices, much less the outcome of the behaviors and the choices and the actions of other people. There could be hundreds of different reasons why someone would want time travel depending on their own personal makeup, personality. I found that there are two basic reasons why people want to travel, either forward or backward in time. One is that we are basically a very curious uh, animal. Is there a human being who doesn't wish to go back in time and to uh, correct a mistake, to undo a loss, to redress a humiliation, and to control what comes next? Everybody asks themselves those what-if questions, and sometimes they're small, like what if I had stayed at work 10 minutes longer and avoided that accident? And there are also the big questions. What if I had taken this job instead of that one? What if I had married this person instead of that one? And as long as people ask themselves what the alternatives are for their lives, uh, for the narrative of their, of their own lives, these films will always have appeal. The second reason why someone would want to go back or forward in time is control. We want to control our lives. Just as in psychotherapy we go back and we look at, you know, parents and how we were raised and how we were potty trained, the same thing would happen in terms of time travel to go back and make the difference. From a psychological perspective, I think it would be most useful to think of time travel as a series of metaphors of how we grow and change of how we attempt to author a creative life, a life that we can make sense of, and a life that is meaningful. Of course, the obvious is the psychological reasons. You know, my mother treated me badly. I would like to go back and change my mother. I would like to go back and change my father. I would like to go back and make a different decision because I made a wrong life choice. For those of us who have maturity, there is forethought. We don't act impulsively, we're reflective. We consider the outcome of our actions and we take them. And then there's the journey. We never know where we're gonna go. The time travel movie says, you know those, that phrase, coulda, shoulda, woulda? Well, you never have to worry about that again. Well, as far as we can uh, ascertain, the, the first time travel movies were actually made in France. And they seem to have been interested in the subject in the early 1910s. In 1910, there was a film called uh, Time Out of Joint, which was about a clock that speeded up time. And basically, it was a man who wanted to get 20 years in the future so he could inherit money in 20 years. The earliest example of, of a Hollywood film that uses time travel in the plot is a 1933 film called Berkeley Square uh, with Leslie Howard in which he lives in an old house uh, that was populated by his relatives in the 1830s and he yearns to go back to that time and actually succeeds in willing himself back. And then the following year they made a, a film called After 100 Years, uh, which uh, was a man going to sleep for 100 years and waking up in the year 2011. And, uh, very close to what's happening now. What happened then? We find out that in 2011, the women controlled the world. They wore the trousers, and uh, he had to change this. He got the men back wearing the pants so that they could take control again. So the, these were the earliest time travel films. They weren't exactly scientific. Patients come in, and they say, I don't want to deal with the past. Past is past, done, over. I want to deal with the now. And I, it's not my favorite question. And I say, great, let's deal with the now. And I will tell you, through your behaviors, through your perceptions, through your beliefs, through your patterns, how you relate to me, how you relate to your significant others, how you relate to your bosses and colleagues, all about your past. Actually, going back in time, there are really three ways that you could do it. One which we mentioned is you can will yourself back. Best known of this type would be um, somewhere in time where uh, 
the man goes back in time because he's in love with an actress in the 19th century and he gathers all the material around him that he can find and uses this to send himself back in time so that he can meet up with her. The character in Berkeley Square does, which Christopher Reeve does in Somewhere in Time, you sit and basically say, I'm going to go back. Uh, the simplest mode is just to go to sleep and wake up in a hundred years, like the man in, uh, in the very early after hundred years. The, the best known film of this type is Sleeper, where Woody Allen goes to sleep and wakes up in the far future and all the things that happen. And this is, uh, this is one that you don't have to have any scientific basis, you just have to be able to have somebody is preserved. The other way to get back or forward in time is with a machine. And usually time machine narratives rely on a concept of time almost as a road and where you stop your machine is like an off-ramp to that year or to that moment in time. It's linear. Because it began with H.G. Wells' story, the, the Time Machine, which is the scientific machine that sends you through time. It can send you into the past, it can send you into the future. The other way to travel through time is through a wormhole or through a tear in the fabric of space-time. And usually, these wormholes, sometimes they're man-made, but usually through accidents, through things that aren't supposed to happen. Some of the machines are very, very odd. The TARDIS is probably the oddest time machine of all. The TARDIS is how Doctor Who travels through time, and it's a phone booth. But inside the phone booth, it's about the size of a, a cathedral. You know, there's a gigantic amount of space in it. And what is so funny about it, it gets sent up in one of what I consider the funniest time travel movie, which is Bill and Ted's exciting adventure. Well, they have a TARDIS, except inside it's much smaller than it looks outside, so it's really, really cramped because if you remember the movie, they're going back in time because they, they're failing their history class and they have to collect people from the historic past to bring them into the future. So crammed into this tiny space are Napoleon and Socrates, known as Socrates in the movie, and uh, Genghis Khan and all kinds of, Joan of Arc, etc. and they're all in this little tiny, tiny space. So this is scientific in, in a humorous way. The Terminator films is an interesting one that shows the, the growing sophistication of uh, causality and narrative logic in time travel films. But if you think about it too much, just like any time travel film, it starts to collapse. Invariably, it comes up, I'm curious, what really was it like back in Shakespeare's time to walk around the streets and just observe, not to change anything, but just observe, to go back to Christ's time and observe Jesus walking down the street? Did he perform miracles? Did he do what he did? Is the Da Vinci Code right, you know? What happened? Was he married? All of these questions that come up, being naturally curious and intellectual, these are some of the questions that we want answered. Because of movies, we can, we can go into Shakespeare's uh, 16th century uh, London. We can go into H.G. Wells's future. We can see these things uh, perfectly well and, and, and experience them in a, in a, in a way which uh, people 100 years ago couldn't. They could read about them but they couldn't experience them, they couldn't see these things happening. I mean, we can, in a film like Gladiator, we can share the experience of being in the gladiatorial ring in ancient Rome. I really love the Back to the Future movies, especially Back to the Future, uh, the original version, because it's an example of a time travel movie in which every line, I mean, every part of the film is tied up and resolved at the end. Um, even down to the, to the last details of uh, parts of the scenery and parts of the town that are just that are just sort of driven by or that you only see in the background all have a past in 1955, a present at the beginning of the film, and then change as a result of everything that Marty McFly did in the past in 1955. The most interesting ones and the commonest ones are from the present into the future because we like to see what may or may not happen in a thousand years from now. And that's the, the films like The Time Machine and a, and a lot of other of the, of the scientific ones. I mean, the there's a whole genre of time police movies. There's a film called Time Cop, for example, where they have to have police uh, going through time back and forth to make sure things don't get changed because of a thing called the time paradox, where, where you can make things all different if you're not very careful. You step on a butterfly at the age of the dinosaurs, and in our time, you know, the butterflies are the only things alive. Some of the most popular time travel stories are comedies, and they're just about doing goofy things in the past, using the ability to time travel to just blatantly manipulate people and the past to your own benefit. So you get 
you know, Biff traveling back in time, back to the future too, to turn himself into a media mogul, or Bill and Ted using a time machine just to get, get a passing grade on their history report. The thing about time travel, it's, it's not so much what you see, it's how the time is portrayed, you see. When the Terminator comes into our present, it's still our present, it's not. We see some of his future, but we don't actually see him, in a sense, traveling through time. You get this in some of the time um, police movies, where they are able to move back and forth through time, time bandits, in a sense, like that. Films like Minority Report are based on the idea that uh, the future is inevitable, that what you see, or like in that instance, if someone's going to commit murder, they're going to commit murder no matter what, no matter what you can do to change it in the past. Um, and that is another aspect of time travel stories where there are characters who are struggling to change the future uh, or change the present, but fate or destiny exists. The time stream is inevitable. No matter what you do, if someone is crossing the street and is going to get hit by a car, on August 1st. There's nothing you could do to stop it. It was meant to be. I think that people coming into psychotherapy and trying to find the handle by going back in time or could be very well drawn to uh, time travel movies because, again, it's that semblance of control that one has, that desire for control, that desire to go back, that desire to figure it out, that desire to put things in some, some perspective so that the chaotic feeling that they have diminishes, so the anxiety diminishes. But if we were able to magically and concretely go back and revise the past, like a writer who gets an option for a revision and two polishes, then it wouldn't be a life. It wouldn't be uh, fluid. It wouldn't be mystical. It wouldn't be magical. It wouldn't be an adventure. What would we learn? How would we grow? How would we have a sense of personal history that has adversity? as well as triumphs? Um, how would we gain a sense of competence if we didn't have the feeling that we could overcome our adversity or make use of our adversity? I think that any of us who have, has truly lived understands that whatever the road not taken or whatever the road taken that has gone through a lot of bumps, uh, whatever losses we sustained, it's inevitable, it's necessary. And how we deal with it is an essential part and an integral part of who we are and who we become.